All right. Looks like all the recordings are going. So I will not ever say anything good about Max Verstappen ever again. Because clearly I cursed him. Ah! <laughs> uh, needs fuel pump. Yep. That tri totally. <laughs> Or something anyway. <laughs> Welcome to Everyone Racers, a show designed for the world of low dollar racing and oddball car culture. It doesn't matter what kind of lemma champ or lucky track dog league you run, SCC or NASA, we won't discriminate, as long as you drive it hard and built it yourself. Join us each week for tech discussion, tips, tricks, news and notes in the world of amateur endurance racing, and whether it's on the spot, hella sweet, or we're lucky enough and Chrissy gives us just the tip. We're sure you'll giggle a little and learn even less. Everyone report to the paddock. This is Chris. This is Chrissy. I'm Jeff. And I'm Mental. And we are Everyone Racers. Thanks for listening to a Packard episode of our podcast. It's episode 236. And the Packard Model 236 had an L-head straight eight engine that displaced 357 cubic inches, had an updraft carburetor, nine main bearings, and it made 85 horsepower. So wow. on a good day. Right. And it's I have worked on every single kind of carburetor on the planet. Venturi's, drafts, Weber's. I don't think I've ever touched an updraft. You just haven't worked on old enough stuff. Yeah. This is this is only a 3000 RPM too, because the problem <clears throat> the straight eight crankshaft is that they're so they're long that you you can't ever get even with nine main bearings. The, mach the machining tolerances to get that big ass crank to spin straight uh, well, is there's really no tough. Balancing. There's no counterbalancing. So, you know, it just kind of. It's still cool. Uh, like, uh, especially those of those had the hoods, I think, that opened to the side. Oh, yeah. They were Gorgeous. they were interesting. Well, so, I hey, mean, Packard's were like right up there with his Spando Susan. Oh, yeah. That was just one of the finest automobiles in the world. It was. It's a shame what happened to them. Uh, so, hey, if you're not driving your Packard or any other Midwestern luxury car, uh, but maybe you're being chauffeured, then you can grab your Banco card because you should. I think Metzl and I should trade shirts this week. <laughs> he, he's yeah. got the Golf and I got the 911 shirt. Yep. Right. Sorry. That was side side comment. It's okay. It's Metzl, like why don't you yes. tell us what you're working on? This weekend, I was at Spring Mountain in Perump, Nevada. I uh, do, yeah, Perump, Perump. I, I didn't was, get uh, a Perump out of that guy. <laughs> <laughs> Porsche Club, Las Vegas region. Joke, uh, really, right Chrissy. No. Well done, yeah. Oh, she better learn it if you got, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, um, <clears throat> yep, classified. <laughs> um, Porsche does Still a know. very good HPDE weekend. Uh, and I want to thank Scott from Zoom Zoom Kaboom. He uh, on Sunday brought up one of his Miatas that he runs lemons with. In fact, it's fresh off Sonoma. Let me take it out. Uh, Chris, you would have loved it because it, it was just right there on the edge. Yeah, you you managed percentage of traction in the turns, but it was extremely predictable. Jeff and Chris, you would have hated it, but really good, fun oh, car. Yes. Me too. Yes, but the way this one is set up, it's right there. Sketchy. Uh, I missed what it was. I don't know why. What is it? What kind of car was it? Miata. In a Miata. Miata. Got it. Uh, he's got a stack of them. Very loose. Uh, also, loose is fast, Cole. We uh, we put pictures on our Instagram of his uh, LS3 swap 914 that uh, ate one of his own uh, half shafts, but it was a gorgeous car. A lot of response on that one. I am still in home improvement and will be an accelerated home improvement until the first week of April when my uh, brother-in-law, nieces and nephews uh, and sister-in-law come into town. Working on hot tub maintenance. So we've got that going and still haven't gotten it fixed. So there's someone coming out tomorrow. We had our air conditioner decide to scare us this weekend by only blowing hot air. Turned out it was a very minor problem because today was our first 80 degree day of the year. And I'm back to a regular schedule. So like normal nine to five-ish kind of work. And Friday night, Vicky uh, had gotten me this for our birthday. I got to see Daniel Tosh live in concert. Yeah, he's still funny. And irreverent. It's great. Excellent. Very good. Jeff. I don't know if I uh, want to see Daniel. There's, there's, some, there's some great stuff on here. And we were talking before we started recording. I am very excited for one of these updates. And I'm going to ask a thousand questions. But Jeff. Oh, I have no answers, but I'll try anyway. No, you're I not have... the one I'm you're not the one I'm excited about. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, what did I do? Uh, nothing. I worked. 
So I had an open house. So I was check it campus on the card talking to people. I mean, I am, then... I'm doing really well on my bingo card. So far. <gasps> Are you? I've I got, need to open it. Open. Oh, I've, no. got, I've got four good now. ones so far. I get to go to the bottom. Yeah. Anyway, I worked, I worked in open house and then on Sunday, uh, I watched formula one and didn't do anything. So it was amazing. It was, it was a great formula. I was just going to suggest that we just have a recap of the, the race. That's not a good pod. Uh, yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. There's, There's a million other like shows that. that do that. Yeah, so. I know. And we YouTube said, which no, is actually how I had to get caught up. Because uh, they were like, everybody was talking about it at the DE. And I'm like, ah, spoilers, spoilers. And oh. like, screw it. I'm just going to watch the uh, format or the uh, one of the YouTube recaps. <gasps> you didn't even watch the whole race. thing? Oh. On ESPN. Just go oh, get it. my gosh. From the, from start, there's, you know, a couple parts in the middle, a couple laps in the middle that was not, not so bad. <laughs> so, so Chris. Catch, catching up my card. I don't have anything. This is terrible. What do you, Chris, Chris, what is Get a new card. Wait. Did I miss the end of what Jeff said? Is that second part of oh, his? Oh, I, I said, and Jim has made progress with a body okay. shop. Okay. We like have, what? Yeah. Why have... you bury it? Why you bury in the lead? Well, I thought no I said that your, No one cares no. about your open house, no, no. Jeff. You talked about right? work. And then no. he's easy, too busy. Easy. He's too busy trying to find a bingo card. Bingo carding. Yeah. Uh, oh, we yeah, don't care. No. Z. Jim, Jim <laughs> has a, Jim has had discussions with a local body shop and they have pictures in hand and have agreed to see said vehicle and work up a price okay okay so. it's, it's every journey begins with the first step so there, okay it begins Good. with a thousand have you done anything have you done anything have you done anything <laughs> by the way for every one you've heard on the show i've done 10 to my brother so <laughs> And we mm -hmm. might have done one, do, done a few on the side. Yep. Yep. Okay. Great. That okay. No, no, cool. No actual physical work. Cool. So Chris, Chris Chrissy, go ahead. Yeah. No, Chris. I, I'm yeah, boring. Chris. I really haven't worked on much since last time because we went on a little vacation to Florida to visit my dad and see there. So that was nice. Um, I did order some parts, some of which have come in, and I've been providing uh, phone tech support for Garage Heroes almost every day for the last week. Pretty, so. it was pretty thorough and phone calls and texts. This wasn't just like, hey, what yeah. do I do about this? Hey, like the car doesn't run. So there's uh, were they at the track or at the yes. garage? Well, both. Both. Okay. Yep. Because on Sunday, I could have gone and helped them. I was like literally sitting around watching mm. this was a oh well like some of it was away. some of it was civic problems mm. not that oh, you couldn't yeah. a lot of it's just putting a car together to run for the first time even though someone else used to run this many teething things issues. have been changed there's teething issues stuff happens yeah okay yeah. that's about at, it at least everyone from our team who tried to take a car to the track this weekend did well who was that who did it yeah. Oh, you, you haven't seen that. The text messages. Uh, it seems oh, that bro, some, bro, oh, Bruce. Some yes. Sorry. Yes. 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 We Mustang, saw that. Mustang uh, with a rebuilt motor might have That's bent a, a, yeah, might have bent yeah, a, ate a, a, ate a rod, rocker, right? Yeah, it broke rocker. a rocker arm. Yeah. 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 That was, that's a three valve, like, oh, seven Mustang motor or something yep. like that in the car, yes. which yep. twists that Fox body to pieces. <laughs> 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 anyway. Now we've buried the lead long enough. Yep. Cause, cause holy crap. Holy crap. Uh, I went to Florida. Oh wait, that's over. Uh, oh my God, that's amazing. <laughs> uh, also we had a super delayed flight last night. Um, stupid frontier. I'm so over them. Uh, it's supposed to leave at six. Oh. 30 what the people on the flight down that we needed their plane they weren't pedaling hard enough so yeah. it took longer they, for them to get they, they canceled <laughs> but they they delayed the flight at what 10 a.m uh, yeah. they told us our 6 p.m flight was going to be delayed then and it continued delay and it continued delay and then we, they changed gates and didn't tell us and uh and then we sat on the plane for a long time i literally had the last seat in the plane and my plane seat did not have a window. I didn't know that was a thing. 
I am very annoyed. And I'm one that look, likes to look out the window. And I kept telling myself, there's plenty of people that just don't hold the window open all the time. And I was just like, but I, when I looked at the wall, I got, I got it, made you, it made you like, wait a minute. Even though I never knew I wanted to look out the window. Oh, I like the I window. No, I window, like, I want to look do. out the window. I like look out of the window all the time. And like, I have it open. It, uh, it d- doesn't matter what time of day. Anyway, I was, I there. have a frontier question. The okay. last time we went to Frontier, we were going to Orlando. Which city did you go in and out of? Orlando. Orlando. Correct. Okay. We were yes. going from Atlantic City to Orlando. Yes. I'm sure you didn't fly out of Atlantic City. We did not. But the flight that was next to us left before us from, and went to Atlantic City. I was like, yes. can I just go there? Because it's yeah. close. You probably yeah. could have. Yeah. Um, the seats in the Frontier Airline yeah. were the skinniest seats. That, they were like Kirkies. Yeah, they're mm-hmm. like kerkies. Yes. Yeah, yeah, with 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 mesh. They're with like, like a, they're like the folding chairs that you bring to watch a race. <laughs> no, I think uh, I think folding chairs recline. are more comfortable. <laughs> no, this, than, is like, than, this is like a, a very very thin hard material. It was like a kirky with it a cover. Yeah. With yeah. a very thin like neoprene kind of. It was padding. awful. A kirky is a great way to describe it, but yes. it, ours is more of a vinyl, so they can wipe it down better. I think, but I think but it was ex- it had just as much padding. Yeah. None. None. Exactly. Yes. That's why and then, my wife refuses to fly. What she I'm, calls. I think. F you, Frontier Airlines. I am ready. Yeah, I'm, like, oh. <clears throat> I'm ready to say the same. I it was our our whole back and forth was so so cheap, and it was supposed to be just a you know quick jaunt down there anyway. So anyway, um, that's my I'm and, and on I've, the I've same got boat. no hate for for Frontier because they're upfront. We are a cheap airline. We're yeah. like so yeah. this much better yeah. than Spirit. You know, so they're not. Well, no, I don't think so. Like I, last American, time I, I American had treat my... you like crap and then, mm. you know, charge it, charge you Delta money. Uh, I don't know. OK, anyway, this is not everyone flights. <laughs> uh, so the, the thing that every OK, so I uh, quit my job today. <laughs> and I, job and shove I, it. I basically did that uh and then no, I, no I, more hank hill jokes i i i mean I you can make them i'm just no, wait, not wait, gonna wait, get wait. so Let's fun offended so we hear the second half what? maybe the propane jokes are still appropriate no 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 i left propane i'm leaving americas uh, i'm going to a uh just a company that makes it's a manufacturing job um so i am going to be a, a e8 um safety manager at a, a like manufacturing. manufacturing plant mm-hmm. standing mm. so she's yeah. going to keep and everybody's fingers in a manufacturing plant basically yes if they'll listen to her mm-hmm. uh, so around you there's a lot of uh uh, uh pharmaceutical companies Correct. are you working for a pharmaceutical company or is no it- it's, no it's okay. just manu- it's manufacturing it's um like cables and uh piping and industrial manual. industrial stuff yeah got it excellent very good. yeah so i've been looking for a while i haven't told anybody but chris it's been kind of my second job my second full-time job and i made it public today excellent so i start and, uh, right after pit sorry i have another question uh I, i'm terrible at this but now like, you've entered like student services mode uh okay. did you did, <laughs> uh 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 how long were you looking? How many places did you interview? And did you get any offers that you turned down? <clears throat> I don't even want to answer any of these questions. Um, I've been looking for about three, four weeks, three weeks, uh, four very weeks. Very short. Good job. Um, I, <clears throat> I applied to just about every job, uh, probably 35, 40 places. Uh, just started getting all the calls right now. So I, I had, I've had three in the last two, three days, um, after I've already accepted this one. So, uh, yeah, so no, I didn't get any other offers. I did do a call or two on places that I didn't want to go. And this one seems good. And Couple screenings, good. full interview, one job, bam, done. Basically. Yes. Congrats. That's, Thank that's you. awesome. Uh, will this one in, or in, tell us to shut up as much travel as the other one? Not, no, not at all. No, it's no, I have to go to work. I it's so I'm no on the work, on, no work from home. So correct. I'm on the floor. Yep. We have a, we close, have a slight chance of catching you fitness wise because you won't be working Maybe. out four times. I, four I, times. I, Only I'm twice already, a day now. So I'm already <laughs> trying to like figure out how to make it work. You're not well, you'll probably get a gajillion steps if you're walking around. Don't. If you're yeah, exactly. Yeah, Pottstown. Yep. Right, right where Costco is. Oh man. Yeah. You don't you get to wave to my wife anymore. Or you I, drive by each other. Well, I will. No, I have to go down to, I just don't have to go as far. 
Oh. So when she goes by, yes, and it probably different. It's different hours because I'm yes. manufacturing. They do three different um, shifts. Anyway, it's enough about me. Congratulations! Congratulations! Thank Seriously, you. thank you. Yes, good on you. Appreciate it. Right. We'll see how are, it goes. Are they going to are they going to sponsor the team now? You know, or uh, they, I didn't get uh, them to. I they didn't know anything. I barely said anything about racing, let alone a podcast. So let's <laughs> okay. let me get there first, and then we'll figure out how it goes. Okay. So when the weather turns nice, and you drive the race car to work. Oh, and then blow their driving. minds and I'm then blow drive. their minds and drive the msx to work i'm not driving what race car like the mazda that says yeah. driver meet no it's miserable <laughs> not doing that why, why would i do that to remind you how notes. nice the mercedes right. is it's, i know how nice the mercedes is. news right. and notes time that don't have to do with chrissy's job thank you under Chris the larger sorry. topic of chanting usa hey. uh, yeah, Grassroots yeah, Motorsports yeah. reports that the famed NASCAR giant Hendrick Motorsports is taking a stock car so to Le Mans. Crazy. Yes, that kind of stock car and that Le Mans. Oh. So lever leveraging a collaboration with IMSA, Chevrolet, and Goodyear, the announcement was made last week. The plan is to compete using a specially prepared Camaro ZL1 from the NASCAR Cup Series. As David Wallens writes at GRM, regardless of this being a move by NASCAR to prove the performance of the next-gen stock car, or just to have one at 24 hours of Le Mans, this should be interesting. It'll be the first time since 1976 when a pair of stock cars, a Dodge Charger and a Ford Torino, Hell were retrofitted yeah. with headlights and wipers and joined the crew. Neither one finished. Dodge died from low active <laughs> fuel after 90 minutes, and the Ford's transmission gave out after midnight. Torino also had drum brakes, and one of the drivers put in a cigarette lighter so that he could light up during his stint on track because <laughs> it, it was 1976. Oh, that's, that's so bad. <laughs> yep. uh, so the Camaro is going to be running under the experimental garage 56 category. So there we go. Wow. American, American thunder. We'll American. See how that goes. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Over under. I do not think it can do 24 hours. I absolutely do. You especially do. with, especially with Hendrix. That, wow. That's not like us taking a stock car over there. That is the person who literally has written the book on how to take anything in any series and win. I mean, I think it might be quick. I mean, it's not going to be competitive with the ALMS cars, but no, it's going to be fast. But, but with They're the not... D, yeah, with the uh, the like the GT category Corvettes and stuff like that, yeah, that would be should, similar. Should be and I, I think it's going to get some people's attention on the straightaway. You know, they'll, yeah. they'll, you know, he'll slide through the corner onto the straightaway. And then during the straightaway, people are like, let me get away from this silly, holy crap, why is it going so fast? Yeah. 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 Here's the next question. Uh, I didn't read this. I didn't read the article, so I don't know who did. Uh, did it say anything about who would be driving? No, not yet. Plenty of NASCAR guys with plenty of Rolex and other experience. So. Not to mention there's a whole staff of EMSA drivers that do both series. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, that's exciting. Uh, in the first of two Teslas going really fast stories this week, <laughs> this week, uh, Chrissy's buddy, Johan Schwartz, just laid the internet hammer down and set the, quote, fastest EV lightning lap at VIR. For those of you who don't know, the lightning lap is the full course at VIR, and it's done by Car and Driver Magazine to test, uh, basically, to be like the American uh, Nordschleife that every production car will have a number on the lightning lap and blah, 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 blah. Uh, this EV did it in two minutes, 50 point six seven five seconds he did this in a 2022 tesla plaid uh beating the previously set porsche Taycan, Taycan! Oh, it's a Taycan. turbo record by 4.5 seconds holy cow just to say that this is not something crazy on the stock michelin pilot 4s 300 treadwear tires factory 300 now i've done some work with those pilot cups at 300 that's that's ambitious these oh. are the <laughs> four factory... s's are different than cups yeah this is the factory tires as delivered on the factory 21 inch arachnid wheels which you know uh tesla people know which ones they are not some factory hot rod that elon's engineers set up to break this record it's a privately owned car that just happened to be at the car and driver readers track day. 
um, and they had, hey, would you like a professional driver to show you what it can really do? <laughs> and Johan Schwartz busted the record. Uh, the video is posted uh, on the Car and Driver website. It's violent. This is not like some dancey, perfect lap. This is like Johan sliding stuff over the over the sausage curbs. Like th this, this was I. If you showed me this, I'd be like, "This guy is manhandling this car," and sure as hell he was. Beat the record by four and a half, five seconds. Awesome. Good for you, Johan. Wow. Okay. Uh, the Midwest Nose Trucks and Twisters. Storm Chaser Brian M M Finger uh, showed a video on YouTube and Twitter that showed this amazing marriage of both. Clip shows a four-lane highway of Elgrin in Elgrin, Texas. Uh, as a tornado crosses the road, what looks like a first-gen full-size Silverado gets caught in one of these tornadoes and pummeled that pummeled the area this week. Uh, uh, catching the full force of its winds, the truck rolls onto its side. It spun in and did a full 360 degrees on the road surface before being pushed back upright by the tornado's gusts and landing on all four wheels. After a brief pause, the truck continues down the road. From what we can tell, the truck looked to be relatively unharmed after the event, save for some sizable scratches on the driver's side body panel and a missing side mirror. It's unclear at this time how many occupants were in the truck and for anybody sustained injuries. Uh, Pretty darn crazy. Tonight, my wife was like, did you just see that on the news and rewound this and showed me this video? Oh, yes. It was fantastic. It's like a I, 2000 Silverado break dancing. <laughs> I admire the the awareness of the driver who's probably going, oh, God, this is how I die. This is how I die. And then clink. Yeah. Oh, let's oh, get out of here. Let's go. Out. Yeah, <laughs> OK. <laughs> she said, can you believe he did that? I was like, hell yeah. What's he going to do? Get out? Thank you so yeah, I know thank you'll you die. Jesus. Thank you and so baby Jesus. Also, so that's the fact that somebody was uh taping this when there's literally a, a tornado. The storm chaser, they have a oh like, it's vehicles. a storm chaser. You're right, you're right, you're right. And, uh, I'm sorry, and I was they, thinking it was yeah, a person. And he was following the tornado and he got had, it. This, this came from his dash cam because if you watch the whole video, it shows uh, oh, it's sure an edit. Going but up I to it and say, no, look at this poor fool. And then <laughs> I don't think the that. guy in the Silverado was a storm chaser. I think he was. No, 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 I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. film came from a storm from chaser. A, from yes. a storm yeah, chaser. Yeah, that I, is, I, that I is missed, Silverado is probably just driving going, huh, well, I ain't turning off this podcast and listen to no <laughs> weather report. Uh, uh, but my beer did fall <laughs> down, though. <laughs> Oops. Uh, yes. Yeah, uh, that's I know. a little crazy. As Jeff into that second report, uh, Elizabeth Black of Sock over Jalopnik is showing the new viral video of an airborne Tesla S mimicking an earlier video of a Model Y that Jeff put on our website. Now, you've seen this clip from Alexander Choi. If not, there's links to it on our Facebook. He prefaces the video by saying, quote, it was an incredibly stupid stunt that could have left people killed. Choi was hosting a Tesla meetup in LA when, quote, a random dude offered to show him the place where David Dobrik jumped his Model Y. The rando then proceeded to do a jump himself, quote, without any warning. If you've seen the video, I'm dubious because clearly yeah, there's a headlight guys. flash. Yeah. There's a headlight flash. There's some coordination, but all right, we'll, we'll stick with you there, Choi. Now, the Los Angeles Police Department says the driver of a rented 2018 Tesla Model S performed a dangerous stunt around 12.10 a.m. in the Echo Park neighborhood. The video shows that the Tesla headed towards the intersection at a high rate of speed when it suddenly catches air. And I don't mean four feet. This thing would have cleared oh, no. a human being. Oh, it was. I'm it sure was he was so sober. I'm sure. Oh, totally. <laughs> Comes down hard on its front wheels, crashes into several trash cans and two parked cars, according to the LAPD who is now offering a $1,000 reward for anyone who can identify the driver who abandoned the car and fled the scene. <laughs> now, Choi filmed the aftermath of the crash with debris scattered everywhere and several people trying to clean up the mess. And it appears that someone removed the car's license plates before anyone could film the Tesla up close. And as with all of these stories, there is a link in our show notes. Wow. Th this has been on the nightly news and like Good Morning America. So I assume everyone has seen this. It's crazy how far this thing goes. I don't think the guy did the physics math. I thought no. he was just going to totally the <laughs> other thing. And if he'd have been going five miles an hour faster, he'd have nosed that thing onto its roof. Yeah. 
Well, yep. we're, we're going to talk about exhaust in just a little bit, but if you're looking for a specialty or ready-made solution or an upgrade, you should absolutely check out RacingJunk.com. They have a big block or small block solutions for GM or Mopar. They've got Zoomies. They've got Ferrari 512 TR set up. They even have Buick Grand National headers and Porsche 991 aftermarket setups, all looking for a new home. I, we always talk about the cars you can buy on RacingJunk.com, but there are a lot of parts, so check that out. We, like I said, we will be discussing exhaust in a bit, but if you need an exhaust pipe set up for your race car, check it out, RacingJunk.com. Uh, let's see here. What else do I have to say? If it's worth the style, especially over... Oh, yeah, there it is. We're going to link in the show notes to the exhaust header section on RacingJunk.com. Cool. I'm waiting for Chrissy to go. Go for it, Chrissy. Do it. Do Up, it. Upcoming races. That worked. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Lemons and Nola, thanks to the fifth host and rescheduled for next week's guest, Eric Rude. This has the makings of a great race. <clears throat> 74 cars, only 10 of which are BMWs, That's which so are so boring. great. But right? great. It's great. Yeah. And yep. actually, one of those BMWs, funny, we'll talk about it in a second. 11 Miatas, three Hondas, four Porsches, and a ton of other NOLA notables. First of which being Rob Sensen and Jen Swanson are getting married. Now, they met at a Lemons race, fell in love at Lemons, got engaged at Lemons, and now the final step is a wedding at NOLA. That's amazing. Congratulations. It's commitment. It's it is. Commi commitment to the oh, theme. That is crazy. Uh, the Monaco, that's M, uh, I can't even spell it. It's spelled Cajun. Monaco Cajun crew has gone full Cajun nut jobs. They now have four cars, including a boring E36 they have as themeless in Seattle. Themeless <laughs> in Seattle. Cute. Uh, yeah, you know, how, you know what happens when you start bringing four cars to every race? Win championships. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's not it's not against us this year so don't really care all right team low speed mm -hmm. high drag is back they are all cancer survivors and they bond over lemons races and rallies they cook fabulous gumbo and are great to hang around with they have two cars a focus at a mustang focus always beats the mustang as they are loaning the mustang to florida man donny and this will be <laughs> probably true again oh oh i'm oh. these are fighting words uh if you're nola <laughs> <laughs> Tell them E1R says hi. Ranger Road has their hand controlled car out again, which is great. And they're going to be there with Battle Scarred as well. Nice. Battle Scarred and uh, Ranger Road together. Oh, sorry. That's me. Tennis. <laughs> <laughs> Waiting on you. Should, uh, yeah, sorry. Tennis is bringing all of their cars, but Ginger Racing will only have three cars there. We are told they are cutting back a bit to focus elsewhere. Yeah, they're just butt hurt that we stole the national champion. Actually, by he's like, really, he's know, really, I'm really not. Kidding. He thought it was hysterical. Oh, good. Uh, but the number 777 Chucky 5 Series has won the last three races in the golf. Oh. Wow. It's actually a legit crab can and has been evolved over the years. Wow. What, years. what body style is that? E34. I mean, like the, currently? Uh, no, okay. It's like a mid-90s. The, the, the Madonna uh bmw 5 series Oof. Eight, they've run e30, like eight sorry, e39 e39 yeah he's he, seriously he's been people get on oh you're cheating 500 dollars my ass he's just it's just a car that he's stuck with yeah. eight years ago they were 500 dollars. yeah <laughs> now the dipsticks are bringing both of their cars and quoting eric uh which have only caught fire a little recently and party girl Oh, the one who is, does the paintings. Exactly. Mental pause to point mm -hmm. at his painting. Yeah, right. <laughs> is adding a, a good B Mercedes, which is the only eight-time consecutive Formula One Constructors World Champion, to their class-winning B Supercharged C Mercedes sedan. All right. That's a Finally, lot of letters there. It is. <laughs> Finally. Car something Mercedes. Check it off your bingo card. If it's on your bingo card. Finally, back when Eric was uh, a real auto journal, journo, uh, covering Drag Week at, for Hot Rod and Roadkill magazines, one of his favorite was George Gallimore. George raced a 1970 Chevrolet Monte Carlo, which weighed 4,200 pounds oh. around the quarter mile in 7.6 seconds at 190 <laughs> oh, miles an hour. 
The team is number 238, hard on parts. And according to Eric, it's the newest BMW we've ever had in Lemon. So I'm super curious what the story is. It's a 2005 646, excuse me, 645i. And now we're all curious. So, well, a story about the Monte Carlo from Brandon Gilroy is in our show notes. That generation cool. of big BMW depreciates like a used condom. <laughs> I mean, like a half-eaten tuna sandwich. I feel Worse. like there's a there's been a slight uptick in the value of those Bengal BMWs after somebody mounted a 50 cal to one in the Ukraine. Yeah, yeah. The, they, the, uh, the, the six series at least is better than the seven series. Like you, you have you have to struggle to give away an <laughs> an 047. 45 i like you can't just can't so no yeah especially if they've had deferred maintenance oh yeah which they all have oh, at this point <laughs> this is that giant coupe yeah, yeah. this thing was huge they were yeah. when they were new they were amazing and it was yeah. one of the earliest ones with the uh much maligned i drive selection system i kind of like i kind of like the looks of that thing oh yeah mm -hmm. that, that, and if this but, guy can get a 4600 pound car down his quarter of a mile in less than eight seconds he probably knows a thing or two well hopefully they didn't mess with it they just kind of like put it you know got it running and put it out there because anyway we'll find out yeah we'll find out recent results champ car ran ncm this past weekend on saturday the rva graphics and wraps topped levinthian motorsports by 30 seconds and on second thought was two laps back Saturday RVA took the top again with two laps on Leviathan and third was the cone crushers. I'll yell just because it transitions right to me. <laughs> Listener feedback time. Uh, not a lot of direct feedback this week. Uh, plenty of interaction on our memes. Uh, I got some shout outs and a lot of likes on the, on the TikTok that I posted uh, the Verstappen TikTok, which has come back to bite me in the ass. <laughs> Yeah. It was good until it wasn't. God dang it, Red Bull. <laughs> oh, man, did they shit the bed. Anyways. Who's Christian Horner going to blame this week? Oh. That's, what oh. Oh. That's the problem. It, it, it's the only one. It's not Yuki because he's the only one that was oh. out of out of the four cars he's oh. able to finish. Jesus. It's not anyway. Honda's problem anymore. Can't nope. blame them. <laughs> nope. nope, it's not. I got an idea. Let's take a Honda motor. We'll put this Red Bull sign. Oh, crap. They all just broke. At the very end, one of them had a pretty big fire. So yes. what's that up with? Anyway, uh, Chrissy, do you want to talk about this? Our yeah, show? yeah, yeah. So uh, I, I just for, uh, was looking at this before we started the podcast that uh, for our first uh, race, we had 20, we have 26 teams. That's awesome. I'm so it excited. It is so awesome. So uh, thank you for, every, for everybody that's joining. And the top three are, at least the top three, are neck and neck because I and Jeff are happen to be one of them. So uh i did a great job of using my one what dean halter is the other one right there oh no i'm just like okay you you make sense but why why is jeff suddenly in the top spot mm -hmm. i got lucky oh <laughs> i also got lucky because i didn't know that i could only use one mega driver or like ever and i just happened to use it on leclerc and leclerc won so and, i and pulled because you get points for the poll too right right so all of the above uh that i just happened to use my one good shot doubling tri uh, tripling for him uh, anyway so we'll see how it goes uh can i make a quick comment about the league Please. itself for all of you who are playing um i didn't realize this and i don't think a lot of people did but when you started your first team, it defaults to the team name of team one. Team one, correct. So there's a lot of people whose team is named team one. You can go back and hit the little settings button and change the team name. My now, my team name is now Maximum Seb and Du Bois. Just so you know. Really was, didn't didn't want to throw for Stappen? Max, well, Max, Max yeah. hyphen okay. among yeah. <laughs> Seb. Maximum, maximum the sitting on the maximum spectator sitting on the side of the road watching the race. Uh, right, right. Oh, but he was you know very what? nice to after uh, to At least he afterwards. didn't pout about it and bitch about it on the radio. Oh wait, he did. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes, sometimes he's just nasty. Yeah. All right. We call well, those. If, we call those if you want to, <laughs> if you want to get off the couch and race too in a simulated way, we have our E1R races on Mondays and. We had those this week too. And unfortunately, Uncle Dave set us up for us because Christy and I were traveling. We had uh, Lime Rock in Cadillacs. 
because that seems fun. I think they had V8 supercars too. AA uh, yeah. Ron won the first race. Uncle Dave pulled out the win in the second. So if you want some low key racing and enjoy time at the back with Jeff and and I, we're we've got room. Come join us. You know who would never complain about their fuel pump giving out when they were selected to be the the, the winner of a race? I don't know. Oh, she, I think she would. <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of a bold but, statement but, yeah. but so but so nice about it sure, sure. <laughs> right. chrissy's mom hi chrissy's mom yeah, yeah. and dad, uh, I, don't forget yeah, everybody uh, i will say that the um the the uh whoopie pies have been finished um i did manage to maintain my uh composure and not eat the whole box and they were fantastic thank you Excellent. Uh, so, Chris, you just remind us we haven't played Guess the Rental from our trip. So, I was gonna, I was just gonna oh, actually move that. The rental that's on my card. I was gonna move that to the bottom. It's also on yes, my card, which is perfect. what made me think of it. So, How let's get back. Let's perfect. get back to that. Of course, it's yes. it'll perfect. be in our. That's our now our around the horn. Just of whatever. Excellent. Okay. Okay, okay that's fine. Great. So now it's main topic time. And nobody yells at him about it because he yes didn't... because he should know by now. It's fine. We're back to the mic. Uh, yeah, we're, we're talking about exhaust. We're going to have an exhaustive discussion about getting the hot gases away from your motor and not breathing them in. And including today, we're talking about making your own, making one that is safe and making one that is effective, uh, design ideas and all kinds of stuff like that. So let's just jump right in. Um, who wants to say start it? So often, and I've seen this from an on track perspective and also from a judging perspective, is the exhaust is just one of those, oh crap, we've built this great race car and I got to do this exhaust. You should plan ahead for this. This should be something you're thinking about how you're going to do it. It doesn't have to be like this, this great design, but if you spent all this time building the engine, getting it set up, and then you just slap something on there that chokes the engine off, you're wasting you, you, you've wasted a whole lot of effort or if you just half-ass something up under the car that rips off halfway through the race and you lose two hours getting it fixed in the parking lot or rather in the in the paddock or you don't even pass tech so this needs to be integrated with your plan for the car and so think about your goals when you're going to start this like little dogs that like to shake <laughs> <They're the best. laughs> And if that's on your bingo card, fantastic. Because it's might be. So um, basic goals and a good exhaust. Number one, you got to get that hot stuff out from under the car and make sure the driver isn't breathing fumes. Hi, Vicky. <laughs> Excellent. Another one on your bingo card. Next, keep hot stuff away mm -hmm. from melty or explodey bits. Yes. And there's a lot of those. So that's important. It seems simple, but everyone who's listening to this that has been racing has seen a car off to the side with something melty and or oh, yeah. on fire. Totally. Can, can I give a quick shout out for the starter? So many people make sure that it gets away and it's like they're building this thing. And 10, uh, 10 minutes into the first race, they turn off their truck or their car. Ours was the truck. And it won't start again. And they I've seen so many people push starting it. And what did they say was wrong? Starter's too hot. Start the battery's too hot. Not every not everything explodes. Everybody keeps it away from the driver. Everybody keeps it away from the fuel. People not don't everybody, think about but you the hope electrics. So. True, I, I should say. <laughs> smart people do that, but those electrics get heat soaked too. Keep it away from the cables and the starter. This and not just that, it's even like um, your clutch hydraulic hose probably has a rubber hose that goes there and that's going to get hot too. What are you doing about that? Like th there's so many things that can be near. Well, we'll, so we'll talk more about those kind of things to look out for too. Um, next thing you need to have in, in your goal, good enough flow to help your power. Good enough. We'll put that in quotes. You know, this is, we're not perfect. This is not going to be a gorgeous CAD one piece single mandrel bent system like that incredible machine we saw at SEMA. The guy pushed a button, the machine sucked in a tube and then proceeded <laughs> to make this 
gorgeous multi-contoured single, mandrel single bed. Pipe, it, yeah. Amazing. All right, this is not that. You're doing this on the on the floor in your garage. Um, next goal: keep noise under track restrictions so you're not causing problems, especially if you're at Laguna Seca, and also mitigate driver fatigue because it is tiring being out there in a loud car. Like and it really you, is. If you don't think it is, it's because your car hasn't been running long enough for you to get exhausted <laughs> mm. from being in a loud car. Uh, and that's a big thing. And every and it used to be just Laguna Seca is the textbook of why you need this. But even at autocross, the SCCA has mandated a 100 decibel limit nationally measured 50 feet away from the track. National Corvette Museum, Road Atlanta. There are many, many tracks out that are having uh, noise restrictions. Can I just say this? You're no. not going to win for that five extra horsepower, uh, 0.5 extra horsepower that you're going to lose by making it livable sounding. And, and loud is not fast. Loud does not equal horsepower, mm -hmm. no matter who tells you yes. There might be some increased sound with a good system. You, you're not winning. Stop it. Your RX-7 yep. does not need to make my ears bleed. Your well, that's a, don't even do it just that's, for you. Do it for the poor people who are passing you, especially if you have a side exit exhaust. And when you come, you go by. There, there are certain cars, you know, you go by and you go, oh, God. Oh, here it comes. It's going to hurt. Uh, ah! Yes. And that's with earplugs. Don't be those people. And last thing in the goal, you want this exhaust not to fall off or come loose and rattle around and do stuff that it's going to do. And that ends up taking you out for the day. So any other goals that we think that we need to make sure we achieve? Those are the basics. I, I, I would like to jump on your, like, you know, not going to fall off and come loose. This comes into this. Oh, it's a last minute thing. I got to slap an exhaust on this. Oh yeah. Two hangers. I shook it. It's good. This is, we're endurance racers. Could be on that car for eight hours if your car doesn't blow up. I would double your regular hangers. There does need to be some give and take because it's designed to move, but you need more than just two points on that where it's held up to the car. Yeah, it's let, not just me, at the at the header and at the tailpipe. There's got to oh, be something else in there. Gotta, no. <laughs> can I just say that I can tell you about a great exhaust system that meets all of these categories? Sure. It's the stock exhaust system that you modify slightly. Like we're talking tonight about building your own from scratch and having things, but really 90% of you don't need to do this. Maybe you just want to modify what's already there because the stock hangers- Depends on how much rust. And the stock yeah. thing, absolutely. That, saying, and you're saying, you're saying stock and I'm going to argue factory because stock could be a replacement system from Rock Auto that uses a quarter of inch smaller pipes sure and sure, a you don't slightly want more restrictive muffler yeah, yeah. and you know a little tiny eh. well but, but stock can also be get the v8 mustang exhaust for your v6 mustang and no, great there, idea you know right? it's gonna follow it's gonna flow so this is not like this is really easy this isn't like swapping a motor or putting in a fuel cell we're like don't even try this we want you to do this but we want you to do it right and we want you to do it smart and before we get into what's going to happen, I'm going to say, like, if you're like already like, eh, I don't think I can really do that. I can do this one. So the, the really welds don't have to be pretty yeah. at all. This yeah. is a great place to learn, yes. frankly. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what I was going for. Go ahead. Let's talk about parts and materials. All right. Well, first off, you got to start with what, what kind of material you're going to make your exhaust out of. And for everything we're going to talk about today, it's going to be steel of one variety or another. No one listening to this is going to go out and TIG weld a titanium exhaust together or no, that's not what we do. So you got your choices in steel between mild, aluminized, and stainless. Um, aluminized is mild with a, a coating on it. You can think of it almost like galvanizing, but it's, it's not as to It's not toxic like galvanizing when it gets hot. Ask me how I know. <laughs> so, um, and stainless is obviously it's it's not going to rust the same way, so it lasts longer. I've found with the race cars, I've never put stainless on any of them, and that it has never ever ever been the problem or a problem ever again, because they don't see enough miles and enough salty wet 
air to ever have it matter. So yeah, and stainless go is cheap. just gonna cost you more. Yeah. Right. And you then if if you really want to weld stainless now, you gotta get stainless wire for your welder. You're, you're not, it's, you're not it's and it's it's not easy. Yeah. So just get them get mild or aluminized <laughs> and be done with it. Don't worry about the rest. Okay. So now all the parts you've got to get. There's a lot of parts. When we're making these ourselves, usually we start off with just buying mandrel bends from Summit, Jag, Speedway, whoever you want to buy them from, Amazon, so that they, they'll buy, they'll come in a J or a U or a U and a J kind of shapes, but there are they're a good quality mandrel bend that you will then cut up and combine with straight parts to make the curves you need. If you have a common... Oh, I was going to say, talk about uh, this real quick, because I think I was the one that shopped for the last time. For like two funny U's and two funny J's. What 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 size did we put on last time? Was that a three inch or a two and a half? Uh, two. We Mazda? did dual two and a halfs in the Z, and the Mazda was two and a half. Yeah. Yeah. I bought four. Now a mandrel bend has many bends in it. I want you to think that it's just a single bend. It's a pretty big piece of piping with a bunch of different bends that basically, oh, look, this is the 45 and this is the 60 and you kind of can slice and part them out. I think it was 60 bucks for all four of them. Yeah, These are not, not that expensive. You, you, and if you can find it, it is way better than running to the, the flaps and getting the one bend just which is probably crush them, bent which is probably guaranteed yeah or the mandrels so let, they're cheap let's talk about the bends quick because we forgot that a mandrel bend is a pipe that is bent and then Good usually choice. has a mandrel let's say like a, 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 imagine a ball that's pulled through behind it to make sure that it doesn't lose any um any you know it doesn't get crushed and it has full flow all the way through it yeah, yeah. it does so, not the diameter of the tube does not change where the bend is yeah it can also just be a really good quality bender like like you would use for your roll case tubing you don't use the harbor freight crush your tube to bend it method you use a nice jd squared good one so same kind of thing because those crushes restrict your flow and you don't want that all right so we got our bends we got some straight pipes you usually get two four foot sections it's enough for most cars um you have to decide what size you want and that's going to be based on how big your motor is. Um, like for example, if you have a stock 1.5 liter civic, you don't need to go more than <clears throat> two inches really. Cause to get that 90 horsepower out of there, that's going to be a big upgrade for you as it is. And like the Z, for example, where it was a dual system and we did two and a half inch from the headers, you know, but it was two, two duals into an X into the, you know, into the mufflers, but it was two, two and a half, which is, was plenty for it for an engine that was a 5,000 RPM engine and each exhaust had to do 4.2.4 liters worth of flow. That was plenty. Uh, the civic we're building now, for example, we put a three inch in that car because it's been proven that K 24s are happy with a big exhaust, even without a turbo, they just flow really well because it's a high RPM motor, which more RPMs, more pumping. So like the, the, Z at 4,000 RPM is putting the same amount of exhaust out as the Civic does at 8,000, even though big difference in size. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, real quick here, let me just share while you're talking. I just wanted to mention it, but you can keep talking. Well, uh, and, and Chris, because you're the mechanic and the technician on there. So you're going to get these people, they'd be like, oh, but you want some compression and you want some back pressure because engines need back pressure. Not really. No, no, they don't. Not at all. You, it's a myth. You can have it. You can have it too big. Like if you put a three-inch exhaust on your ninety horsepower D6 D15 Civic, you lose. There's not enough flow to have enough velocity, so it just kind of. And that comes <laughs> down to the Bernoulli's principle: is if it's not creating an area of low pressure, so the air just kind of gets stuck in there. So yeah. that's one of the things because exhaust doesn't come out in a steady flow; it comes out in a pulse. And all the pulses come together and depends on, you know, how many cylinders you have and how they're arranged. And that now you're getting into fun header design stuff that is well beyond the scope of anything we can cover here. That's for sure. But, um, I, I just want to really quick show this, like here is a three inch, uh, aluminized, uh, J it is a very big J 180 degree J bend 28 99 on summit. Yep. It's not expensive. It's not expensive. Yeah. Especially because if you go to go buy an aftermarket exhaust for your car, they, if for lemons, they probably don't make one. 
because that's why, right? Or you know, you're looking at seven hundred dollars because they're targeting it at the you know casual weekend warrior who just wants their car a little louder, and it's going to be super shiny stainless pipe, and it's it's going to be really expensive. And the judges are going to pay a lot of attention to you that you probably don't want when yeah. you're going through BS inspection. But if you have a car that's commonly used for racing kind of stuff, you might be able to find pre-bent bits that are already fit for your car. Like, which actually I cheated on the Civic this time. That's what I did. I was able to buy a kit that was three inch piping made for the Civic. And, but even then I still had to change it because we have a different engine in it and I'm putting, you know, it doesn't do anything for your muffler and you still have to fit a clamp in it. You still have to do hangers. You still have to do all those things. So there's still work to be done, but for the, I think it was 200 bucks shipped for the three inch piping already bent for the Civic. I said, that is money well spent, frankly, on, in my time. I would, uh, I would like to hear your, your mechanical discussion on the two bolt versus the three bolt clamps or the infamous, the infamous sliding U joint that comes in the yeah. little tiny cardboard box at the flat. Yes. At this point, I'm all about the V band clamp. I have of heard about V bands for a very long time on many of my YouTube what, channels. Uh, what is it? Them. Well, we'll describe them all. A two bolt clamp is it's a thick piece of metal on each flange and it has a hole in the middle for the exhaust and then a bolt on each side, 180 degrees opposite of each other. That's it. So think about the mechanical force holding that all together. It's not great if there's any twisting in the direction that's not the bolts. It just, it can separate. A three band clamp is a, imagine a, a triangle essentially with the hole in the middle and there's three bolts around it. That's a lot more clamping force and it holds it in different angles and it works nicely, right? The one problem with those is you always end up with the one bolt on the top that you can't get to, and, <laughs> right? And those are, those are the flange clamps. And, the, and a lot of times you're going to have to work with some of these because the exhaust that you have might just come with that or the header, you know, the Amazon special header you bought has one and you, you, you've got to find a way to, to bolt up with that. Um, that's a flex joint, Jeff. We'll get to that later. Oh, sorry. Uh -huh. The two bolt, that's what you're talking about right there, right? No, no, oh. no, not at all. It's literally a flat piece with two bolts and look, look up two bolt flange. You're looking up clamps that that's, that's oh. different. All right, I'll stop anyway, you. I got to Yes. Cause I need to get back to what I, I was looking at. Um, so the three bolt flange has that, and there's always a gasket between the just thick chunks of metal. A V band clamp is it's, that's something where a picture really would help. It's essentially a, <clears throat> a wedge shaped piece on the edge of each pipe. And they come together to create kind of a mountain peak. And then as a clamp that goes around it, that is the opposite shape and the tighten it up with a bolt and it holds those two half mountain peaks together. Exactly right. And then when you want to undo it, you just undo the one bolt, whole joint comes apart. There's no gasket. There's no other bolts. It's easy to get to. It seals up nicely. It's, uh, <clears throat> they're, they're not that expensive either. And they work quite well, except I do have one problem with one of the V-band clamps I've used recently though. On the Mazda, I put in a joint in the pipe right after the stock catalytic converter because that car still is emissions legal. And I went to take the exhaust off after a couple of races, and I think it may have slightly welded itself shut because it's so hot after the cat. So I was not able to get it undone easily. So I left it and I'll deal with it if I have to another day. So, yeah, but that's a V-band clamp right there's there. There's your V-band. Yeah. I have yep. the two bolt and three bolt pictures. Yep. So there's a V-band clamp. You can see it's, it's the raised portions and they're usually you know, somewhat, there's an angle to them somewhat. Um, they come together and the clamp goes around the raised portions and gets tightened with that T-bar bolt. And the T-bar bolt holds it all really tightly together. And then it should be able to come apart. Okay. Okay. So that's a two and bolt. That's a two bolt flange. Yeah. Which is, it's literally just a thick piece of metal with the holes. Like I described you can, it. You can see down here, here's one that's you're welding onto the pipe right there. Yep. Okay. And then the three bolt looks like that. Yep. All right. So go ahead. we'll keep going on this. The last kind is the sliding joint with the U-bolt clamp. This is the kind of the ubiquitous one that when you're trying to hack together an exhaust on your car or you just had the muffler shop do it at, at Meineke, this is the kind of crap they're doing. Um, 
basically they can, they can expand one pipe a little bit as a pipe expander, make the two pipes, one slides into the other, and then a U bolts goes on and clamps it tight and it'll, it'll make it tight, but then you go to try to take it off. And if you, if you've really tightened it down, you have now just distorted both of those pipes and you will not be able to take it off. So then it's no longer becomes a serviceable joint. And it's really nice to have a serviceable joint in the exhaust because like, say yours has to go up over your suspension and you need to take that suspension apart. Well, now you have to take the entire exhaust off and that's a pain. So put a serviceable joint in it somewhere where you can get to it. Okay. Still on the parts list. Hangers. You got to hang this thing up. Like Mental said, you need a lot of them. Look how many were on that car when you took it off from the factory. Like I'm thinking on the Mazda when I did that, there were five holding that on from Mazda, if not more. I don't think I put that many on, but we put enough on. Use those stock ones that they're, use the stock rubber hangers that are there, unless they're trashed. Fine. Those are the best ones. They're sturdy. They're durable. If they're designed to meet an OEM cycle, they're going to be good for you. No, um, no, and they're cheap to replace. Yeah. Is it worth getting new ones of I've those? Never, I have yet to, because I always end up having extras that like, because again, the Mazda had five. I think I put four on. I had an extra one. Okay. We had extras from other cars. I always end up having them around yeah. and I've never had to get another one. I, when I saw the 928, I did have to replace the one at the end because it was bouncing off the car and annoying me. It was $3. Yeah. yeah. And you can get other ones that are not the stock style that I have used pretty with successfully in other cars too, which are like a, it's a rubber strap with holes in it that then goes to a clamp. And that works for, if you're in a difficult location, some of times those work a little better too. Kind of deal right there, um, right? Yeah. See, I don't like that one particularly Jeff that you're pointing to because it's a tiny little rubber strap. Like I like the ones that have a longer rubber strap because it's a lot more flexible when it's, when the rubber strap is only one inch long, how much flexibility is that actually giving you? Nah, okay. Like none where with the, the stock ones, where if you, in your image search right there, you got the ones that look like a, it's a, it's a, it looks like a racetrack with a swimming pool at either end kind of thing. Like, and, and those have these things down here. Yeah. Especially the ones on the right. Like those have so much flex in them, but they also have a lot of sturdiness to them because the exhaust has to move. So, and for the, uh, for the other side of hangers, it's just some, some solid metal rod, even if it doesn't fit perfectly, it, it's okay. So you get that like three eighths, three eighths or quarter inch rod, bend it in your vice or, you know, get it good and hot and bend it well. And then, um, we'll talk about how to put those up in a bit. That, that's funny. Cause I always leave them straight. And wherever they hit the pipe, we're welded. Yeah. Well, Might not be the best. You're right. Come to think of it. The bends help to keep them in place so that they don't slide off. Yeah. Well, they always next, have like the, you know, this at the end, the hook. Yeah. At the end. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, you can do that too. All right. Next thing, a flex joint. This is not optional. Your exhaust has to have a flex joint in it because your motor is moving. Ever seen an engine at a dyno and how much it moves? Even with stiff mounts, those are suckers are moving around. There has to be flexibility because otherwise the engine is just putting leverage on the whole exhaust system that is 12 feet long. Te tearing it apart. Te yeah, absolutely. This is where pay it's going to break. Yeah. Pay attention because Chris just solved your consistent cracked header problem. Yeah. It, you have to have a flex joint and it can be the kind like a sliding ball flex joint. That's fine. I usually end up using the, the, the mesh style. Like it looks like a Expanded braided stainless the, cover yeah. right over the thing. I've never really seen one fail. They can fail potentially. Like if you've got it really close to your header, they can get too hot and they can do you know, things like that can happen. But, um, but also like the header I have on the civic, like it came with one and that's super hot or not on that engine and it's doing fine. So, but you have to have that. And when you make the exhaust, you want to make sure that that is not constantly under stress. You want it to be pretty neutral when the motor is at resting state, because it's going to flex both ways as you accelerate and decelerate question jeff uh i think we're getting to the bottom of your list yeah and i haven't heard anything about uh x pipes or y pipes well that's in the design section okay we're, okay we're we'll, we'll get about. to it then okay go ahead yeah and that only applies to v motors too i understand um mufflers you could we could have an entire show about mufflers so we're not going to go into that but essentially if you want to quiet it down get the biggest one you can and there's multiple different designs of mufflers get 
more than one design because they cancel out different sound waves. That Interesting. Can help. So like a flow master, for example, is a chambered muffler that just has kind of a series of obstructions in the way uh, that, that stop the sound waves. Um, you can also then have a bend around, right? Then you've got the kind of the more standard, you know, it's like a, I don't even know what they're called. The, the packed mufflers the that are glass, glass pack. Well, there's glass packs. There's like the straight through kind of old school, like cherry bomb glass packs, Hell Let's call yeah! those glass packs, right? Cherry then bomb you get everything. Then you get the kind that's on like every, you know, every street car that, that metal showing up right there. Yep. That's, mm -hmm. you know, that's a, I don't know what it's called. Flits. It's a flow master, but most flow masters are chambered. This one's not. It's a pipe running through a a, a can full of fiberglass, essentially. With with, with drills once it's inside the container. Yeah, with little holes in it. Dissipate right. noise. <clears throat> yep. And sometimes the, the variation on those is the pipe comes in one side, has to go through those holes, through the fiberglass, and, and through into another set of holes to get pushed out. That's kind of a more OEM style. Um, then there's the bullet type mufflers, which are the little racy ones. They're, they're, they're like a glass pack, but even smaller, but they can have some little, they have little like scoops or, or dimples or things like that in them too, to help change like sound. Cones, and if, like cones. Yeah. Well, there's I've those two. Um, there's super traps, which don't ever use cause they're terrible. Which is, <laughs> frankly, super trap is a brand and a style. Yep. Yeah, they're terrible. They, they, Disc they, style, I think. By the time, by the time you're actually muffling it, any you have lost so much power, um, and the, and they get really fancy. Some people have um, pipes that are dimpled because that changes the frequencies of things, and now you're getting way beyond what I know. So this, I'm keeping this simple for lemons kind of stuff. Um, but anyway, mufflers. Try, put pick the big the one's going to fit, and Summit has a great way to do this on their website. Essentially you go to exhaust mufflers and now you start picking, all right, intake inlet size, two and a half inch outlet size, two and a half inch. All right. Do you want the inlet in the center or offset? Like all those things, what style do you want a, an oval muffler or round muffler? Like it, you can keep narrowing it down and narrowing it down and narrowing it down until you actually are at the right place, including case size, you name it, their selection tool for stuff like mufflers and like radiators is amazing when you're trying to figure out what ish universal kind of part can fit in what I have, this stuff works great. Use Summit's website. It's yeah, all cheap actually. Yeah, I'm a big actually. fan of Summit, yeah. For, yeah, for this stuff especially. Um, need a welder and all the welding stuff because you're gonna weld, okay. You're gonna need some sheet metal or other good heat shielding coatings, wraps, um, material, whatever it's going to be, all of those things are good. And we'll talk about heat shielding because everyone here has done heat shielding. So that'll be a good topic for everybody. <laughs> yep. Um, and you need an angle gauge, a Sharpie and some magnets to help you piece this thing together when you're How lying in the work? car. Sharpies, ma oh, magnets, <laughs> magic. Yeah. magic. Nobody knows. That's the problem. <laughs> ICP, okay. yo. Okay. Check ICP off your uh, juggle. But the, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So now we're going to talk about actually making this stuff. So I want to talk about heat shielding first, because this solves our heat, keeping heat in the right places problems. And all of you have done heat shielding on our various cars. So who wants to talk about how they like to do heat shielding? Uh, I already started the starter thing. So I'm going to talk about how we okay. talked about how we moved the heat out of the starter. So when we had built the Chevy S10 pickup boat, and several different things. We were constantly heat soaking the muffler. And the very starter, first thing- Starter, you mean? Starter, sorry. The very first thing we tried to do was, oh, put a heat shield. So we took a piece of sheet metal, like you, most people think a heat shield is, and we stuck it in between. And it's still overheated. And the, the one thing that I think we learned immediately was somebody said, oh, get the other starter that moves it about another inch and a half away. So it's also gear reduction, which is, gear, yeah, that too. was also helpful, but air gaps, air gaps are very important. Okay. A piece of metal against a piece of metal against a piece of metal is just going to transfer heat. But a piece of metal, a one inch gap and a piece and a piece of metal and a one inch gap is a way, way better heat block. So when you're building some sort of 
heat shielding and you're going to go the piece of metal in between the thing that's hot and the thing that is not, the air gaps are very, very important. Otherwise, you're just making a frying pan. Yeah. Yeah. I was totally. Gonna, I'll do another one or I'll pass it on to someone. Okay, I'll do another uh, one. Well, I'll say, okay. uh, well, and we're talking about melty bits, exploding bits, electronics, things that are going to go wrong. Also, do consider your passenger compartment, as Jeff just mentioned, is metal is a conductor of heat. So if you're getting the floor underneath that car hot or that transmission tunnel hot, that's something your driver or you have to sit in for two hours, not fun in say like July at Thompson. So you're, you're think about where you're routing this thing also in relation to where your driver and even some of your parts inside the cockpit are going to be. Yeah, I'm going to talk about sticky heat shielding. Uh, or how do you like? How do you make an air gap heat shield, Jeff? Like, oh, I say, okay. I yeah, want an air right. gap heat shield. How do I do that? You did that under the Civic. You've done another Civic. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, mentally, so, you did it under the Civic too recently. So, like, how do you do so, that? Okay. Say, okay, there's so, an exhaust. What am I doing? There's an exhaust. <clears throat> Let's say you're, you know, I'm, I'm going to use my hands here because I don't know how to say it. Your starter is here, and your heat, your your piping is here. You're going to put a piece of sheet metal in between it. You need they need to stand off. So you get a piece of cardboard and you cut out, you know, the shape that is going to cover what, you know, at this point we're talking about the starter. You don't bolt this to the pipe. You bolt it to what you're protecting. And you don't bolt it directly to what you're protecting. If you can, you try and bolt it to something adjacent to what you're protecting and you have it stand off. That's what we mean by making a heat shield. So if I were protecting a starter, I might use, uh, you know, like a bolt that is on the motor, which is, you know, right there next to the starter and a bolt that is further down. Or I might, you know, put in a hanger, you know, not an exhaust hanger, but a heat shield hanger and put it into the body, the body of the, the vehicle. OK, so get out a big old piece of cardboard. We all know how to do cardboard aided design. Stick it up there, get your scissors, cut it to where it's the shape you need, then take it over to the sheet metal, trace it on with those Sharpies, bend it in your vise, whatever you need to do, and bolt that sucker solidly. You can't just wire it. You can't just use bailing wire. You need to drill a hole in it and have a bolt pass through it so that it's going to stay where it belongs. Because if it flaps, it's not going to be helpful. It's just going to make clangy, clangy, clangy sounds. And then it's going to fall off and it's going to hurt somebody. So you must use bolts, have to pass through that sheet metal. If you got to weld tabs on it, weld tabs on it. Uh, but that th this is like, this is like caveman engineering. Okay. See thing, make thing, bolt thing. Not that hard. It's a great starter fab thing too, because it doesn't matter what it looks like. At all. No, <coughs> no, yes. But everybody goes, oh, I made it there. And then I was like, oh, I just, I like connected it right to the pipe by welding it right to the pipe or I welded it right to the, no, no, no. Use bolts because you're going to want it removable. I know there's other kinds of heat shielding material that you can use aside from just sheet metal air gap. And I know some of you guys have used that. Yeah, mm -hmm. I was going to say, what was that stuff that you just bought? Because that was fantastic. I'll tell you how well, I, I made it. One of the things, like Jeff's talking about starters, but you'll do see a lot of this stuff, especially in the drag racing world. There are specialty wrap items made out of very similar material to firefighter suits that literally Velcro around delicate electronics. Mm -hmm. And there are variations of this. It is an insulation style material coated with a reflective quasi-metallic fabric almost that you can bolt or apply or glue into places where you're trying to keep heat away from there. And the good thing about that is because it is a cushioned fabric, there's your built-in air gap. Now this can get expensive and it tends to be very specialty, but if you need a good solid solution, it's not a bad way to go. You can check Summit injects for that sort of thing. While we were at PRI, Jeff is talking about the material that we used for the transmission tunnel in the Civic, specifically you did. It's called Floor and Tunnel Shield from DEI. Yeah, this was a 
um, flexible but very rigid piece of material. I don't know if there was metal in there or mold. The, it was sil the silver puff, the silver part yeah, is yeah. metal. It's like a it dimply, highly reflective metal. Yeah. And then there's a fiberglass layer and then there's a sticky layer. Yeah. It was like a big giant sticker to, you and, know, and it comes in a big flat yeah. sheet. And what I did is I knew that the exhaust was going to be running through this transmission tunnel. So again, caveman engineering. I got under there with a pair of scissors and a big piece of cardboard. And I shoved the cardboard into the hole and marked where the bolt holes are and marked where I was going to cut it and cut it and fit it and cut it and fit it and cut it and fit it. Because when you screw up, you throw the cardboard out and you get a new piece of cardboard. You don't do this with the material. All right. So once you have the exact shape that you need and you pull it down and you flatten it out and you realize, oh, that's really different than I thought it was going to be. You put it on top of the whatever matting material and then you cut it out and then you get back under the car and rebend it and reflex it. It was flexible enough that I really was able to kind of like like um, on the unibody car, there's all these like studs that things hang off of. I could like jam it on the stud and it would bend around the stud, pull it down and then drill it right there, like under the car. Yep. There it is. Drill it under the car and stick it right back in. You couldn't really get it to poke through very well. You had to kind of coax it. It was a little bit tougher than that. And we now, do have a link to that in our show notes. Uh, 10 inch by 10 inch. Uh, how much was it? 20 bucks, 20, 12, 12, well, 13, $13, $13. $13. So that stuff was fantastic. I would use highly recommended wood shield again. That's not the stuff that we use though, is it? Yeah, it is. That's the exact stuff. It's the exact stuff. I'm pretty is. sure you threatened me and told me that it was very expensive and well, I should not have any waste. That's a 10 by 10 sheet. When we bought one that was a couple feet long that was $80. Okay, $13 so. for less than a square foot is expensive. Yeah. So, yeah. I but made you a did video. a nice I job. made a video of it and I don't know where if it was We should just post that on the not. YouTube channel. It was so just good. like a quick video. Yep. So it'll there's a be, couple ways It'll be right here. <laughs> hey, pressure. So there are a couple <laughs> ways to to, to deal with heat but to block heat there's we talked about air gap that's a really effective way <clears throat> especially if air is moving past it that's how it really works um next one is is reflectivity so something shiny can bounce the heat back and they make they like, like the stuff we were just looking at had a hey, shiny face to help bounce stuff back they also make shiny tape you can put on things to help give that like i've wrapped that, that tape. varish tape the kids call that to varish tape okay i wrap that stuff around <laughs> Um, like, a, like they talked about the clutch, clutch, um, hydraulic hose on the Z. Like I wrapped that around that, like anything that helped give it a little bit of extra protection. That's good. Um, there's also, uh, insulation, which is, that's why the, the, the floor and tunnel shield we're just looking at has that fiberglass layer. Cause that creates a, a bit of its own air gap. The same reason insulation on the wall of your house works is trapping air. That's how insulation works. It's trapping air. So. You know, if you find ways to to give more than one of these kinds of things, then you're you're increasing your protection. Yeah, so and like, just I'm gonna say your OEM use the same exact things, but they put them inside the car, and you can't do that in a race car because you'll catch fire and die. So well, basically, like the Mazda, the Mazda's transmission tunnel, most of the way, all the way to the back is lined with the metal part of that DEI floor and tunnel shield, just the dimply shiny metal. And it fits perfectly. So we left all that. We had to make some some shields up further further up that we did the same way we're describing. But if, if, if you've got the stock stuff, leave it. Or if you can modify the stock stuff to fit, it's going to be easier than making it from scratch. You know, like you know, you know, Jeff and Noon Mental made the, at least started making the, the bits that went around the fuel tank on the Honda. And you, you know, using the exact methods you guys are talking about, they are bolted to the chassis. They do not touch the exhaust. They are multi-piece. It was all cardboard. It was all over, you know, it, but it all worked out. And once I did a little tweaking in it and got it fully into place, then I put that floor and tunnel shield on it 
in addition. So now we've got an air gap and a reflective surface and an insulation, keeping the heat of our exhaust away from the fuel tank. Because that's bad, kids. Do that. <laughs> yeah, yes. Well, and so it, it, you're, it is obvious that you're talking about, you know, heat and gas, bad equals fire. But I had this in there earlier. How long, it was almost an entire day that we struggled with the TR at pit race a couple of years ago because they had a busted muffler dumping hot exhaust gases onto a fuel line and it was vapor locking the fuel system. So we would get two laps, get towed in, give the truck driver cookies, get two laps. And for the life of us, couldn't figure out what was wrong. And I think, Chris, you finally went under there and went, dude, how are you not seeing this problem right here? It was a big gaping hole in the muffler. Yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was huge. But it was like, oh, no, no, that's not it. it. It was, it was. It was just, it was uh, enough heat to, to turn the fuel into vapor before it got to the injection system. And, and vapor lock the fuel line, basically. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Chris, okay. what, about, what about exhaust departure locations? Uh, you know, I, I, that might go into design. I don't know if we're there. Uh, yet, yeah, it all, well, yeah, about. design's the next part, really. Okay. Well, it's got to get outside of the car, uh, not the, you know, everyone with a pickup truck in the South that just runs their flow masters into turndowns right outside, you know, under the bed. No, we're not doing that. Because then it's especially under race car. It's got to be outside of the passenger compartment completely. Some people do side exits. Okay. Some things they work out really nicely on. Um, I usually end up doing rear rear exits. It's a little a uh, little more work because you got to go around axles and suspension and stuff. But usually side exits a problem for ground clearance that you just don't have enough on that side once you do it. And then your Datsun truck tears its muffler off every time you go on and off the trailer and creates <laughs> other problems. Or, or your Firebird fails because Pagel says that's too low and it's going to fall off. Yep. And then it falls off. So Pagel was right. Any of those things can happen. So that's why if you follow the stock, the stock tract of the exhaust system, and that's probably going to be your best bet. Um, okay. So now it, we've got it. And then we've got to get the exhaust from the header out to the back. So I'm going to, I'm going to start with a simple car. We're going to talk about like a four cylinder single header design and not get too far into the rest. And the cast. I'm going to say hello. right now, my dogs vindicated. Yep. Oh. Yeah. Well, my wife came home that's why the dogs were jiggly oh ever since yeah. we've got home less than a couple hours ago she's been yep very, very demanding so we'll start at the header and in the civic the header comes like right up under the under the middle of the car in the trans tunnel with a three bolt flange so i got the other side of a three bolt flange put that there um, and then i actually needed a an expander be, that goes from two and a half to three inches because the header collector is actually two and a half. So, but we're going to expand that out, especially as, as ex, the exhaust gases cool, they're going to slow down and that'll, okay. it'll work getting through the collector, but then it'll, as it gets yep. bigger, it'll, it'll work better for it. It's so anyway, better to trumpet your design mm -hmm. than to neck down. Exactly. And as early as you can. So, Hold the three, have the three bolt flange up in place, either clamp it or bolt it to get it solidly in place. Put the, the, uh, the expander on it, tack weld that in place, hold a piece of pipe up a straight one. How far is this going to go? Is this going to, is this going to work? Is this a good angle? Does it need to do something else? If it, if it's, if it can go straight, then perfect. Tack it in place. Go until you find the point where you're going to need a bend and have a bunch of jack stands under the car too to hold the exhaust up as you're going so that you're not doing it because you can't you need two <laughs> hands for other stuff right so are we going to start talking about pool noodles no no pool no, noodles no pool you noodles no no way uh, you they're, could they're check, way too melty you can get coat hanger or welding rod for for figuring out the angles of bends though which is yes. a nice yeah, thing yeah, to be able like to do that. i've done that um so then when you get to a point with, with a curve, all right, measure what like, we usually end up holding two pieces of pipe in place, like overlapping each other and saying, it's about that. Okay. And especially if, if one's held in place by the jack stand, okay, I've got that held in place. Then you get your angle finder out and you see mm -hmm. what the angle is. Yep. Then you go to your mandrel bend, you cut out a piece of the bend 
And sometimes, you know, especially the first ones, you're going to use the leg that's straight after the bend too, because that might fit perfectly for the next piece you have before it needs to go again. So look at your bend, find a piece that's going to give you the angle and the length that you're going to need. And if you can't get the angle and the length, we'll get the angle. And then you can just have a straight pipe after that a piece of you just again you've got your your length Real of straight easy pieces to make that pipe a little longer or yeah. a little shorter yep totally as long so as it's straight cut your angle which you know, i usually i mark it with a sharpie of exactly kind of where the cut needs to be get it on the chop saw and you want to use something like a chop saw for this not an angle grinder or a sawzall because you need straight, straight square straight. cuts so that yep. you can weld them together because if they're angled then okay now i can't weld that together or you end up with one side looks great and the other side is a big gap these are all terrible things to deal with so and, and real quick here we just mentioned that these you buy these j bends or these u bends or these funky triangular bends if it has a 180 degree bend and you only need 30 degrees you cut the pie at 30 degrees mm-hmm like you don't have to like you don't have to okay i need a 27 degree bend let me go buy a 27 degree bend no you buy 180 and you cut the circ the radius where the circle matches what you're trying to do and that's why we do these mandrel bands because it gets you the degree you want that probably is not available otherwise and then <clears> you have the whole other side of the 180 to get the next bend and the next bend mm -hmm. and the next bend and if you're just doing, if, if you know you're going to have a couple solid 90 degree corners, great. You can buy 90 degree bends. And Absolutely. those are really you nice. You can buy 90s and 45s yep. and 30s and whatever. But yep. we find that these funky kind of J's that kind of go left, right, left pretty much has yep. everything we need. Absolutely. And there are some times where I also like to have connecting pieces, which is those are pieces that the, so let's say you're using two and a half inch exhaust they're going to have a two and a half inch inner diameter so that your pipe will slide into these connecting yep, pieces. Yep. So that's a great way when you're not sure exactly what the angle is going to be. Like when you like, we've got one angled piece and a different angle piece, but you don't know the exact orientation, connect them with one of those. So that's lets you get just right. And then tack in place while having that slip joint. Um, also your, your mufflers are these kind of pieces because the mufflers, you slide the, them in. So if you have a, for example, a resonator up, under the in the tunnel that is now a connector piece and you can do this exactly this and it helps you with length how far you don't have to jam the pipes all the way into the muffler flange you could put them halfway it's fine mm -hmm. this gets you to do the twist it gets you to do the length um it's just it's a lot of fiddly work it's a lot of measure draw look at it again cut it look at it again curse go cut it again. <laughs> you know? And every time you do this, you're, you're, you know, if you're not on a lift, you're going you're on the ground, scooch in. So get a, get a carpet remnant or something. So you're, you, it's a lot easier to do. Fazio, $6. <clears throat> yep. Uh, Leo Rolt, philosopher and woodshop teacher in my high school said, measure twice, cut once. It's always easy to cut a little more off. It's really hard to add a little. So go a little long. Absolutely. Uh, and as you're designing your exhaust though, don't necessarily just go for the middle of whatever area you have. You wanna keep it away from obviously things that shouldn't be melting, but understand that your exhaust is going to change in size and shape as it gets hot. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like for example, the one in the Mazda grows by a solid three inches from when really? the car is cold to when it's hot. I know yeah. it vibrated when it was hot and we noticed that it was pushed into the body at that one it, spot. I it vibrates it that it, far. It, it, the, the, the way the muffler is in the subframe of the Mazda, when it's cold, the side it's toward, no, it's the side toward the front of the car, like you know, toward where the front is, yeah, yeah, yeah. that side of the muffler hits the subframe. When it's hot, the other side does. <laughs> I didn't think it would grow that much, and it did. Uh, so that I had was a no real idea. lesson. I mean, I in, knew it um, vibrated. Yeah. I had no idea it was moving that much. That's what she said. <laughs> I oh. swear it grows three oh, inches. All of these things. I was going to stop you a while ago, and I let you go, and it continued. So yeah. just got it. Uh, that didn't even get into my mind. Oh, my goodness. This is why I, I sit in the corner. <laughs> 
dress sit in the corner. Oh, that's not uh, on your bingo so, card, but sorry. it should be. Sorry. So that's another reason you need flexible hangers because if your exhaust is growing that much, the hangers have to let it move. That's why the ones we were looking at that had just the one tiny little inch of rubber Doesn't how much movement well. is that really it's not giving you any yeah, movement yeah. especially compared to what the stock ones look like mm. right so really at this point it really is just piece it together you're making your own puzzle as you're going and just start at the at the fixed points and tack it together just a little and or use your use magnets like the kind you, you get from harbor freight that are those triangle ones you could put those on hold the whole yeah, things in place this is what they're called yep, yeah exactly so use those use your joint pieces to give you options and you know what if you didn't if you did something wrong get your angle grinder out with a cutoff wheel and cut just the tack and start over with that piece but if you go if you do a good job all the way along, eventually that it'll just start coming together and it'll start making sense. But the, you know, the first bit is hard, but then really once it starts to go, it, it becomes easier. And then you get back to where the muffler is. And so then you have to make sure your angles are all just right and hold your muffler in place. It's all going to fit. And you know, it, it really make your own puzzle. And if you have a second pair of hands to help with holding things, it doesn't, you know, it, it's okay with that. That's nice too. It's always good to have a friend to hold things for you. Especially so. when they're going to grow three inches when they get hot. Yeah, um, absolutely. Uh, so uh, tell me about this tacking procedure because you 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 went over pretty quick, but I think uh, I know when I built the exhaust on the Titan, I did this incorrectly. What do you like? You said weld. You you said it really quick. Start at the front or start at the back for the actual like final welding. I like to start at the, well the the final weld is after it's all tacked. Yeah. You mean, but where do you start? Like, yeah, like, okay, yeah, well, once I've got it kind of built, I'm like well, tacking here and there. Okay. Well, once when I'm, when I'm tacking, it is just a one or two second weld, just enough to slightly join those pieces of metal together. And I usually do two or three of them per joint so that it doesn't twist. So then once the whole exhaust is tacked together like this, then I take the whole thing out and then just start doing 360 welds on each joint. And I don't really have any rhyme or reason to where start where just just go get them all done. But while you're building it, start from the the hard point, which is usually the header, and work your way back. Yeah, 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 yeah. I I welded it from the front to the back, and I found that because I didn't, I guess I didn't, I I didn't get the tax perfect or I didn't things things moved, so I had to readjust things mm. as I got near the back. Probably because the, you didn't have. Like too, the muffler if, if, was twisted yeah. and I had to kind of like cut those tacks and then re-clock the muffler and then yeah. kind of like do it again. You need Which a good, just going to happen. You need a good three solid tacks. will hold it in place. Okay. If it's two and especially if it's, it didn't quite get good penetration on one, one of those might break or, or come off and you're not actually, then it won't hold it in place, especially as you're taking it off and dragging it out from under the truck and things like that. Yeah. yeah. The truck muffler was like ginormous too. Yeah. I mean, it was, it was like a dual in from the duels to a dual out. Yeah. And it just, it had to be clocked perfectly or else it wasn't going to reach everything else. Yeah. The other technique I like to, when I've got two pieces and I, I'm struggling to get them together, like I, or I can't tack it where I am, but they're smaller pieces, put them together, hold them in place with one hand, take a Sharpie and draw like a three time squiggle across the joint. Oh, okay. Because when you do that, it, the squiggle will only line up one way. Yeah. No, I get it. Like, like an S bend, like. Yeah. It's, left it's piece, like, right piece, left piece. If, if, if you've ever seen the, on a Mercedes as eighties, Mercedes diesel, the symbol for the glow plug warning light. The, no, <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about. Mental knows what I'm talking about. Absolutely. And, and no, the, the, the little, point like that you're making, and that's not just for, uh, you know, that's heck that you, you should go back and re-recall the roll, the roll cage episode uh and it's actually an old school 90s uh, security procedure is you put a piece of tape over an envelope and you sign your name half on the tape half off the tape because the if it's tampered with at all because it only lines up one way so just make a goofball squiggly drawing and it will only line up when those angles are perfect because a few things are frustrating as you pull it out you get it all welded up and then after the 90 degree curve it sticks up too tall and it's hitting the bottom of the car and you got to cut the whole thing off and redo it yeah, yeah. 
the 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 little loopy loop squiggle uh it's the same thing on the glow plug on a ford so I okay know what that looks like. good all right so yeah the, the, but i use that especially in a lot of the early pieces like where i'm getting the like for example the two and a half to three inch expander into the first piece if it had a, a bit of a had a bit of a bend to it um getting it just right squiggle 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 take it back out take from under the car get a good well done well right done. things like that yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. awesome uh, uh i mentioned y pipes and x pipes do you want to talk about what they are and what they're good sure. for if you have a, a dual exhaust system so a v8 a v6 and you the exhaust is coming back it is good to connect the two of them because of the way the firing order works and it's different for every car but in general they should connect somehow so they make these pieces that are x there's this crossover and you just put the pipes from one side goes into each and it comes out the other way i've seen people do this very poorly on their own and they basically snake them down to one pipe and just choke it off and then go back out the other way that's terrible um a you know a, a very cheap and easy way to do this is just to make a, an H pipe, which is just a, a connecting tube that goes across to it. Mm. But then you have to make sure you've drilled out a big hole in the side of each of those pipes and then put that H one on there. And that lets the pressure equalize between the two, but doesn't really do anything for flow because anything that goes between them is now having to make a bunch of 90 degree turns. Yeah. Which we discussed, especially if the stop band drill is bad. And right. this comes down to the pulses, exhaust lead to the pulsing Bernoulli's theory inside the combustion chamber is seven times a greater pressure than your atmosphere and by having those pipes together it does help go out and that's why almost all of your factory dual exhaust have this your even your harleys always have a cross pipe between there now the harley guys will do it because it sounds cooler but it actually is a reduction in performance and efficiency of the exhaust system yeah true duels that never touch each other not a good design yeah that's like what we had in the Citroen. It sounded like two Geo Metros racing instead of what a gorgeous model <laughs> should have sounded like. Well, and they went out each side, didn't they? So you yeah, only got did. one side at a time. Yeah. But even still, even in the middle of the car, it's still, it sounded bad. Yeah, no. no. Um, all right. And, so they buy an X pipe, everybody. They're not yeah. that expensive. Nah. They're oh, really not. The they make it so easy. Jags, yeah, they have all that stuff. You, you're going to waste a lot of time trying to build that H, and it's not yeah. going to be as good. Just buy, buy the X pipe. Yep. So we've done all this. What are some things that are going to go wrong? Uh, first Jeff thing we'll, welds it. Jeff welds no, it. I'm sure. Sorry. No, that's fine. Now, first one I think is you get too close to something. So if you're going along, you realize, you know, this is hitting something I don't want it to hit. Then go back to whatever joint is closest that you can redo that'll solve your problem. Or sometimes you can't and you, you just got to cut something off and do it again and that's okay mental the dog can come it's well i'm sorry it's 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 you know we're we're recording this a little later and it's dog dinner time right now and they are being quite vocal and hey hey uh -huh. seven o'clock buddy <laughs> yeah i'm a diabetic i need my food now yeah next thing that that goes wrong i've happened to have this happen a bunch on the mazda is you've got a, a bend that's a little off it's not quite in the right place it's not quite enough you need a little bend. So now you're oh. going to do some weird stuff. So like yes. pie slicing, you mm. can pie slice a pipe. So if you've got a straight pipe and you need a little bit of a bend in it, cut a wedge out of it, but don't go all the way through. Bend and, the pipe closed. Yeah, And this should be graduate level kind of thoughts. If you're excellent at that geospatial design type thing, otherwise you are inviting a lot of frustration. If, you oh, yeah. if, if you're not, if you're me and you're not Chris, don't do this. Just and only do just it. Just build the pipe. Only do it a little because it's not a great flow. Like this blade guy. width. It's got, yeah, yeah. it's got a little more than that even, but not much. Cause it's got, then it's got sharp, sharp angles instead of the nice smooth curves of all our mandrel bent stuff that you've been making. But if you need to adjust it just that bit. Like we did with the headers and the Z, didn't we? Didn't we do a pie slice in that? uh i don't remember what i did i thought we did oh yeah i i did a pie slice on the headers themselves where they attach to the flange that, yeah 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 like exactly. i chopped it chopped 90 percent of the way through every single pipe at the exhaust to bend the whole okay. header to hug it closer to the block yep and then welded it back together inside and outside and then ground the welds down on the inside so it flowed I'm, that's a good i'm thing pretty sure i remember you inventing new curse words during that process that was yeah 
yeah. and I have a burn scar right here. <laughs> <laughs> so don't do that. Yeah, yeah. but we, we had to move the our top tip. Yeah, we had to we had to move the collector, and that's why it had to be done that way. Which is why you just watch for a dumb idea. Yeah, yeah. don't do Fair. it. Uh, last thing I can think of that goes wrong is you have a joint in the wrong place. I just did this in the Civic. I needed to put a joint in because we said, don't make it a one piece exhaust, put it takes so, so I went, so I, I kind of held it up. So yeah, that should be about right. Cut, weld the whole V-band clamp in, went and put it in the car. Nope. Hit, hit like three different things. It was the worst possible place for it. So then it's a matter of, you know, cut two inches off the top of the blanket. So it's the two inches, at the bottom of the blanket blankets, the same length, but you move the piece in the middle. So I'll just yeah. cut, cut the pipe, move it around, reweld it. It's not that bad, but that kind of thing is going to happen. Um, and we this is about one hangers. of those patient hangers. processes because you, you, know, you, you lay the whole design out from, from, from front to back, and then you tack it from front to back. And then yep. you go and you know, uh, seal it up from front to back. And at each point in this process, you are still going to have to make continual refinements and adjustments because mm -hmm. it's, yeah. it's, it's going to move, it's going to distort you just missed something yeah and now we're ready to put the hangers on and again go front to back um while while jack stands are holding it where you want it to be but also the same way no. you should wipe yep totally <laughs> now when you're <laughs> when you're doing this know that hangers flex because they're supposed to so don't have you know, <clears throat> i so i put the hanger one side of it onto the hanger in the car have the other hanger ready hanging from it ready to weld to the pipe don't just kind of touch it against it and weld it because that's not as soon as you let the jack stand off the whole thing's now going to sag because those hangers need to have some some tension on them mm -hmm. so pull the hanger down a bit with your hand to change the angle of it so that it's preloaded slightly or if you can lift the exhaust up mm -hmm. so higher than it would be normally then weld the hanger on. Then when you let it go, either way, it should be weighted and in the correct place. And this is one of those two hands can help type deal. Get somebody in there who squints, turns away from it, holds it and puts that pressure on there while you get that tack weld in place. And this is also, as you're designing the hanger, you want it to hang in the center of your desired space, recognizing there might be some tension. So don't just move the pipe to the center, move it in the opposite direction so that it settles. Mm -hmm. In the center. That's that's why having op opposing hangers with one on each side of if you have the room like in a tunnel is great because it holds it in every direction very nicely. Yeah, when I was uh, this is not race car stuff, this is truck stuff, tow tow truck stuff, but same the, stuff. Yeah, yeah, same stuff. But uh, I went from a single exit exit to a dual exit because you know I wanted to be cool like that, um, and and getting the exhaust tip to exit correctly on that last rubber hanger that did not have a factory hanger i had to do the exact same thing where i was like you know like it was a heavy piece and it was you know like you had to kind of like shove it into the body weld mark let it drop and then shove it back in to get the rubber hangers to get together it was it was it was actually really hard to get the, those tips angled and exiting in the right place well use use jacks and stuff too like you can put a jack at a joint specifically that can help change the angles of everything that's there and get yeah. things moving like use other tools aside from you to hold things in place so you have your hands to work if you can i, I think what i probably should have done was build to the like because that piece was the most difficult piece i shouldn't say difficult that had a lot of construction there i should have constructed that before i did my last joints mm -hmm. because then that sometimes would be more helpful yeah i should have hung the tailpipe and then built to the middle and then always finish it off with a turn down if it's a race car if you can because that helps keep it quiet it no reason really not does. to face the pavement people you're not trying yep. to impress anybody yep uh awesome. are we will Okay, so uh, as we are wrapping this up and moving into the uh, uh, on the spot, I will say this uh, piece of advice I got from one of our listeners I've known for a number of years, Scott Hedrick, who is building the K24 Swap Miata. Actually, it's built and he's using it as a track toy. He's been testing it. Uh, once told me, and I believe this is true, that the only true places for expression on your car are the paint job and the exhaust. 
because everything else is dictated by purpose. Okay. <laughs> I've, just, I've just always enjoyed that. So if, if you're trying to uh, convey a message about how tidy and efficient your car is, have a good, well-built, well-designed, well-hung exhaust. Well-hung. I heard yep. you was hung. <laughs> well, heard right. Uh, awesome. We, Anything else? I like this? the sounds of that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I, I'm, try, I'm looking for a listener shout out, but I don't have any. Listeners, if you have any tips that we forgot or you want to show off your blingy ass welds in your exhaust system, post that, nobody, Always, that yeah. nobody's going to see. That's text, what's great. Mm -hmm. That's what's text great that, about. Text me that junk, yo. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. It's around the horn time, our favorite game. Who's going to guess the rental? I, we I, do. Yes. I'm saying, so it basically it's me or you. Chris. Either it's yeah. you or me, buddy. Yeah. All right. I know. Well, I was like, on, we baby. were in the rental together. It's I, it's for Stappen. I'm the captain now. Or, or, yeah, it's for Stappen or Hamilton, buddy. Okay, so we're in Orlando okay. with National. Choose your car from Emerald Isle. Mm -hmm. Emerald. We're driving. Okay, so that eliminates the Sentra. They had the centers in the Emerald but uh, oh, I would say we did not take those. Uh, <laughs> You're not supposed to be saying what we're supposed to do. What? They Stop. know I'm not taking a Sentra, so it's okay. Okay, <laughs> okay. No fine. Matter what. Fine. I'm giving, I'm giving the baseline a, parameters. Right, that was a giveaway. We, we only have to transport two of us and one suitcase, two hours each way, plus maybe a little around town. Mm. But you can. know enough about me to know what I would and wouldn't choose to start with. So uh, we get to ask questions until we get a no, right? Uh, <laughs> uh, what class? That's not a what? Well, uh, not a, mid, mid, like I said, em class? Emerald Isle, it's it's whatever they've got, but it starts off as midsize, but it can be anything. Like I've okay. had everything from a, a Challenger to minivan to uh, Malibu Fusion. Okay, here's my question. Malibu. How was the weather? Or anything. Lovely. The whole time. Perfect. Didn't rain. It's lovely. Did you both like it? For the most part, yes. Yes. Okay. Did you buy, did you select by trunk size, storage size? No. No. We did not. He said one bag. Yeah. I'm just saying. Well, we had, yes, yeah, so literally. Like, well, we had our big bag because there was, you know, enough clothes yeah. for two of us, but one bag, two backpacks. No. Did you throw it in the back seat of the trunk? Oh, good question. Trunk. Oh, okay. All right. Oh, I feel like this starts to get into give it away territory, but okay. domestic or import. I thought these were supposed to be not like. No, th these are all fine. Okay. Well, it is an imported nameplate. I believe this particular car or SUV or truck was, I think, constructed in a U.S. plant. I, um, my brain um, is already picked. I'm the okay, make yep. and, and the location. And now it's just about which Toyota SUV it was. Make, make your choice, Jeff. Pathfinder. That's too not big. a Toyota. It went too big. I don't know. No, no. no <laughs> and, and that's an Asian. I'm sorry. You know the Toyota um, Pathfinder. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, a great. No. That's, that's not what I meant. Because um, you had the Pathfinder last time and you liked it. I I'm did. trying to. Um, you had a Highlander before, is what she had. But... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's what I meant. I meant Highlander. Yeah. So that's, I'm going to make my guess. Okay. But I, it's too big. I should have gone the small. Toyota. You could still take it back. All right, you come on. One of you two has got to do something. This is terrible. So I'm, radio. I'm, I'm, yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm going to stick with um, it, it, it. It is not an SUV. I'm going to say you guys got a, you didn't complain about it. So I'm going to say Toyota Camry. Jeff? I'm, I, I'm sticking to the Highlander. And the winner is? Because I don't think you would have got the RAV. Oh. That's if we got it. Yep, 20, got 20, it. we had a Camry. 2022 said, Camry SE. It, U.S. built, and they put bag in trunk. I didn't know that the Camry was built in the U.S. Georgetown, Kentucky. Absolutely. 
Most uh, black rock bar built in the United States, actually. Notice yeah. we all focused in on Toyota. We knew that you weren't going to get a Nissan. Well, oh, we almost, we almost. Anything else. They oh. wouldn't have been happy about it. Hence my, That's did true. you like true. it? True. Yeah. <laughs> if, if no, we did not like it. Nissan Maxima. No, no, no. No, at least a Maxima would be a little bit better. But like, yeah, yeah. If it's a Sentra or an Altima or a Kia Sportage or <laughs> and a lot oh, of those. That's when you just right. turn right up, right back around and go. I'm sorry, I'm gonna need another Emerald Choice Isle because. And we've had a problem with with this airport as well before. Oh, uh, that, the question got, I didn't ask is, were there lots of choices? That's probably what we. Should there were ask. lots of terrible choices. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> there were not. We. I ran over. I. I ran over and jumped on the Camry. It was the last one kind of hiding. It was all the way down the aisle. And I was like, Chris is like, he stood next to a Impala? A Malibu. I Malibu. stood next to the Malibu because that's definitely okay. better. I, I would have the... gone Malibu over Nisa. I've had, I've, had, I've had good boo rentals. Yeah, Absolutely. Because otherwise the choices were Sentras, Altimas, and Sportages. Uh, uh, that's it. Right. All of uh, them. Uh, yeah. And then I, and I think that somebody just... Didn't... Where did you go for the ragtop? You know, little Chrysler Sebring action. We're not, we didn't. We drove from Orlando to Jensen Beach and then didn't really go anywhere else. So like exactly. So like you know, because no, that Camry way, with like, the windows open is just as well. Camry was great. Yeah, yeah. it was fine. It, 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 got, great car. it got thirty six miles to the gallon in all of our trips, and that's do a lot of time at eighty five. It was comfortable. It, the steering and handling was quite nice. The engine that's, made good power. That's what the, they it, keep it, saying. They the engine saying was a little can... coarse, but it yeah. you know. But everything else was great about it. Did it have the uh, driver assist? Oh, yeah, I had all of them. I actually all had of them. I, I, yeah. I, I tried the all right, you drive car for a while, including you know, including the steering and going and braking and stuff. And it does almost as well as our Mercedes does. Mm -hmm. So I'll call that good. No hybridization, it's just a gas job. Nope, just gas, gas with an eight speed automatic, not a CVT, actual gears. Yeah, good. Um, so my like real Toyota. my real complaint was the headrests. They were very hard and they were at the wrong angle and they were not even trying to sleep in the car just to like put your head back. It was like a board. Like it pushed you forward. Yeah, it was it, the angle wasn't good, but the like the, the, the part on your head was really uncomfortable. So I was annoyed by that, but that's because I had we had four, five hours in the car that I had to sit and look at it. But that's really the only complaint we had. If you mm -hmm. just want a normal, regular, nice to drive, good mileage, reliable car, like you don't go wrong with this thing. It's the, it, I, it, I can't understand how anyone could possibly buy an Altima if they have driven a Camry. Yeah, I don't Cam understand. Camry is the go-to. What kind of car should I buy for my aunt, my sister, my cousin? Or an Accord. Like as we, much Camry as you can afford. But this really because... had all the fit and finish. Like the you know it has the really nice. It's probably not leather, whatever they use now these days. Uh, but it still had the wrapping. Like everything looks nice. Like it was all comfortable. And before we delve too farther down into everyone Camry, we should probably talk about next week. Okay. All right. Do we know what Great. we're doing next week? Yes, we do. We promised you rude this week, uh, but mental messed up because we're doing this on the wrong day. Uh, he had some business center today and schedules conflicted. So, but we are, uh, he's here next with, next week with us. So we will uh, talk to him then. Not sure what, what they'll be here. And it's always a good time. Do we know what we're talking to Eric about? No, I just said that. I literally just said that. I know that, but I'm just saying. Look how close I got. Oh. oh. What did you ha not have? Someone, Someone okay. either needed to buy a car oh. or sell a car truck boat or talk about heel and toe. And you, you know what? You're this close because the uh, guy that bought the uh, 928 has officially completely flaked and ghosted. And the guy that bought my engine and drove up from Palm Springs is coming to get it on Monday. Now you can oh, just, well. just could have asked. This close. Oh. Sorry. Good it's job. Good. Good job. Oh, well, thank you for downloading us. We hope you enjoyed this week's edition of Everyone Racers. We hope you'll join us in the world of driving, racing, and building because everyone can be a racer, even you. If you enjoyed this podcast, subscribe. It's totally free. Then go to iTunes and give us a five star rating. If you're watching us on the YouTube, hit the smash, the like button, talk to us in the doodly doo, all that kind of stuff. If you have any questions or show ideas, drop a comment on our Facebook page, Everyone Racers, or email us at everyone.racers at gmail.com. You can still text mental 
484-243-0455. Show them your exhaust or your blingy weld or whatever. <laughs> Find us on Instagram or Twitter at everyone.racers, YouTube and Facebook. It's all there. Even Reddit slash E1R. Thanks again. And then until next week, keep the shiny side. Up Join our fantasy it, league. Join our F1 join fantasy, our fantasy league. league. Or if, you if can. your can you? full stainless steel chromey exhaust is down, keep that one on the bottom.